I'm Zach. And I'm Darcy. We're an LDS couple who struggled with unwanted pornography in our marriage for many years. What was once our greatest struggle and something we thought would destroy us has become our greatest blessing and triumph. Our hope is that as you listen to our podcast each week, you'll be filled with hope and healing and realize that you too can thrive beyond pornography and create the marriage you have always desired. Welcome to Thrive Beyond Pornography. We're so glad you're here and we believe in you. Hey, my friends, I hope your Christmas was merry and bright. This week on the podcast, I want to bring you an interview that I did with one of my clients, John Layton, and I want to share with you the value of coaching. In this interview, you're going to hear how things changed for John and how he is now no longer struggling with pornography, which when you join my membership or when you do individual coaching with me, that's exactly what you're getting, is getting to a place where you are no longer struggling with pornography and you can get to a place where you begin to thrive beyond pornography. All right, my friends, hope... Your Christmas was amazing. Hope you have a great week. I will talk to you next week. Yeah, I think so. Do, do I still get urges? Absolutely. Like, I think that is, uh, uh, it's like your favorite. Oh, so I also like Diet Coke. Like, let's, you know, so <laughs> okay, when right. I sit there, when I, when I sit down with a, a bowl of chips and salsa, my, my, my tongue's already like, where, where's that Diet Coke? So nice. in some ways I, I, I'm like, okay, there's uh, I know what that feeling is. I, when I, when there's an urge or a thought or like, hey, it's been a while, you know, they, they bubble up. I'm, I don't want anyone. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll get to a point where like, it's totally gone, but this, I'm in a mortal state. I'm a natural man. Like I'm not uh, going to let my, myself feel less of myself because I feel tempted I think one thing that that bef- the difference shift was was when I'm coming from a point of fear or a point of being like overwhelmed, like oh man, it's gonna happen. Like it's been it's been a while, it's been a long time. It's it's gonna happen. I know it's around the corner. Like it, it, I'm gonna get tempted, and I oh my gosh, I'm gonna be alone on my computer this week because no one, you know, everyone's Nobody working from home. Office. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, now it's like. Yeah, I can look at pornography. Yeah, I can. If I wanted to, I just don't want to. I don't want to do that because then that's not being who I want to be. Like that's that takes away from how I'm trying to live. And that just seems like a really self-sabotage. Like say sometimes imagine like, yeah, I could do that, but I might as well stab myself. Like it's the same (laughs) kind of like logic is the same kind of like, oh, I'm trying to lose some weight. Let's just stab myself in the leg and see how I do running this afternoon. Like it's the same, same thing. Right. That's, oh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So why did you, why did you come to coaching? Well, Um, let me, let me first ask you, what did you try first? What had you tried in all of your life? Well, all my life was like, yeah, I have a problem with pornography. Go to the bishop. Like that was just in my mindset. That was just like, that's the repentance process. Like, I, I don't want to say, I, you know, didn't have other deviations and where I was not being faithful, but pornography and masturbation were like the crux of, you know, yeah. the, the, the sore that festered on my, on my side. So I just felt like it was revolving door. Like uh, the Bishop had just a, uh, you know, sp- a me on speed dial, right? Like, Hey, I'm coming back in. And I think I had done some business coaching, um, obviously because of just the, drastic nature of having to run the company. And I do, I have an MBA, like I, I have experience in, in business, but I just was like, man, I've, my life is falling apart. My business is in a tough spot. I got to figure out how to make this work. And I saw real success from two things. One was accountability. I wanted somebody that there wasn't an emotional side, like my wife or a sibling (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or, or even yeah. even the bishop, the bishop yeah. who sees me every Sunday. And like, I he love serving. You. Yeah, knows me. And I love serving the church. And the worst is like, I go and do a service activity on Saturday and then I got to go see him on Sunday. Like, it's yeah. just so deflating. And uh, like, I'm feeling shame for trying my best. Even though I'm failing, I'm still feeling shame for trying my best. Like, that's a horrible way to feel. And so to have accountability to somebody that's like, hey, this is how I'm doing. I kind of need you to take the this from me because if I sit and, fest and let this build inside me, I'm just going to go back to it. I'm just yeah. going to – it's the only thing that's making me not feel this way. So you'd worked and, with bishops. Had you worked with yeah. counselors? 
I had worked with a counselor a long time ago, like I don't post mission. Um, I it was, you know, new, I think it was new for me and partially new for my family, kind of like, Oh, this, this might help you. And right. I enjoyed it, but it was more of the side of, I think that the idea at that time was like, do the 12 step program, go see a counselor and you're done. So did you go, so did you go through the 12 steps? Oh, I've done 12 steps. Yeah. So that was, if we do the package, it's like do the 12 step program, go see a counselor, see your bishop and it's done. And yeah, then right. I'm sitting there and like, it's not done. <laughs> I'm still having problems. So am I broken? Like, am I the piece that's, that's wrong? Cause clearly which, I'm which, broken, which yeah, by the way, like, that's what the 12 steps tells you. Like yeah, in their big yeah. book, it's like, well, if they didn't do the steps well enough, then they did, they didn't succeed. And that's on them. Right. That's kind of the yeah. way that they couch it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really interesting because I take nothing from bishops because they essentially be, you know, they're thrust into this role where they have very little to no training and they're, you know, a judge in Israel. And it's not like they're like automatically, you know, you get called as a bishop and you know exactly how to teach someone to not look at porn or not be unfaithful or any of that stuff. Right. Yeah. And I, yeah. And, I and I think your experience is so similar to so many people. Mm-hmm. Um, what's different about coaching versus the things that you tried before coaching. Yeah. So the first was definitely the accountability to someone that I wasn't, and I'm trying to say like having emotional connection is a bad thing, but it's the fact that I could have accountability with somebody who wasn't bringing some type of emotion behind it. It, In many ways, it actually is like a small example of, I imagine how, interactions with the savior are going to be and i, I don't mean to ex, you know extend that comparison too far there's that i don't like uh, it. it i don't, I don't like it that i'm much. stepping back from that the <laughs> yeah. handle is not here yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what i mean is i imagine now going to the savior and you know telling him what's going on in my life and there's no longer this like hmm that really, really screwed up and more in the way when he's like this adulterer is brought before him and he's like yeah. I don't condemn you. I, I love you. Not only do I love you so much, I'm going to go to this atonement. I'm going to love you so much that no matter what you tell me, I'm going to be okay with it. It's really interesting. I think, I think you've made a, an extraordinarily good point there. It's really interesting to me that the Savior doesn't really talk about you know, what, the, what the woman brought in adultery did. He's just like, okay. I'm not going to condemn you. Go and sin no more. He doesn't make it into a thing. And of all the people on the planet who could have made it into a thing, you know, you know, I, again, I don't want to take anything away from, from bishops, but you know, we've all sat in front of someone, whether it was a bishop or a counselor or whatever. And they were like, dude, get your act together. You got, you know, you got to figure this out, that sort of thing. Um, and again, I, I'm sure that's not everyone's experience with bishops. I've, I've had great bishops and I've had less than great bishops. And again, I take nothing from them, but I just kind of like think about the example of the savior there. And I think he, he did, he wasn't flexed about it. He wasn't frustrated. He wasn't like, and, and he knew what the cost was. The only person on the planet that knows the actual cost, right. Of what you're doing. And he's like, okay, listen, I'm not going to condemn you. Go and sin no more. Yeah. And that, and, and it's like, okay, it's behind us now. Let's move on. Let's, let's figure out how to not be that person yeah. anymore. Yeah. And I don't mean to say there's not no consequences from your choices, no. yeah. but it's, it's, it, for my business coaching, it's like, Hey, here's, let's talk about what your goals are. Let's talk about what we want to accomplish. If you don't make money, like if you don't follow through with your goals, you don't make money, like then that's okay. Like that is what happened. And it's kind of the, and I never had the my business coach be like, "Oh my gosh!" Like they were not too, so invested that they care. If I, you did if, what with yeah. your time today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, "What do you want to accomplish?" Let's chat right. it out. And that's kind of was the same thing. It's like I acknowledge you acknowledge there's consequences to my choices, but I'm not going to make the choice the focus of this conversation, right? Yeah. No i I think that's a I think that's a really good point. Is that when you sit down with someone, especially a coach who I think is invested in who you are, but isn't going to, I don't know. I played sports and I like, I, I was not a good kid. <laughs> <laughs> it was my coaching session now. All right. Tell me Zach. Yeah. You know, right. And I was that kid who was always screwing things up. 
And, you know, you'd have these coaches and they would just be like, dude, that's not what we're doing. And, the, and that, that was it. And, they, and you'd move on and everybody would get back in the, in, in the line and we'd, we'd, we'd get better, right? And I think sometimes that's just as valuable. In fact, I think that's way more valuable than anybody who's standing there going, come on, I can't believe you suck so bad. I mean, that's not what they're saying actually, but that's really the way that it feels, right? Yeah. So when you think about the, the way things have changed for you, what would you have done differently had you known this stuff, you know, 10 years ago? Oh, so here, this actually speaks. So I, I said that coaching had two things. This speaks exactly to it. So the second point is the difference between accountability and internal accountability. Yeah. Because even in the 12-step program, we talk about it being accountable. But like, as I said, the process was do the 12 steps, like accomplish every 12 steps, then, you know, maybe see a counselor, or see a bishop. And it, it it's not that it was like tick box, because, you know, we all say in the church, oh, we're not ticking off boxes. But we kind of do, you know, we, we kind of still do it. Like, oh, Culturally, we do. You're 19. When do you, you go on a mission? Like, oh, you're 25. Do you dating anybody? You know, like, right. it's like, when, when's the Oh, kids? you're 26. Yeah. And do you have yeah. any children? Yeah, exactly. So, so there was always external accountability that was a focus. Even yes. though, the, the, even though in my mind, I'm like, okay, I want to be good because I want to be not only do I want to be, you know, worthy, but I love the gospel. I love Jesus Christ. I want, I want other people to feel Jesus Christ through me. So I got to be clean. Like all that was still there, but the accountable nature was like to my wife, to my bishop, which step am I on? Have I finished that step? The future, the shift forward is like, I'm accountable to me and me only. Like, it turned into, you know, being about internal accountability and me recognizing that I'm really only accountable to myself. Like I have, I have a role and responsibilities they played in my wife, my family, my bishop, you know, the savior. But in the end of everything, it's all me. It's accountable to me. It's my yeah. choice. It's so instead of like just focusing on like the porn problem, it's like I make a goal or plan for my day if my choices don't align with that goal and that plan, then I reflect, is the goal and plan wrong or do my choices need to be different? And sometimes it's a little both. I mean, I'm, I have lazy days. Let's, let's be honest. We're all human. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's now it's just me. Like I have to bear the, the brunt, the responsibility. I totally put my faith in the Lord helping me through it. But it's kind of what the advice that President Hinckley had from his dad on the mission. Like, get on your knees and pray like it's up to the Lord and then get up and work like it's up to you. And that's, that's what I have kind of tried to make my, my motto now. So. Yeah. And it's interesting, right? I, I often hear people ask me, you know, people come to me and they're like, what's the best filter? What's the best way to have an accountability partner? There's only one accountability partner and only one filter that actually works. It's the machine between your ears and that's mm -hmm. it. There's no other system that's going to actually solve this problem for you. And once you start to recognize that and then, you know, take on that responsibility. And I think a lot of times we, you know, we say, well, I'm responsible for this, but we don't we, like, we, we still say things like I'm an addict, yeah. which is, which in and of itself is, is an offloading of responsibility. It's like, Oh, I'm, I'm broken. And therefore I don't have the capacity to change. So that's what's happening to, to me, not for me, to me. Right. Well, and that speaks to the first point I had, like taking responsibility for it when you're in that emotional spot when you're like, oh, like I take, I'm the worst, like, like God crush me with the mountains, you know, like I'm, yeah. I don't even want to see you that, that I actually feel is, is like Satan's way of taking responsibility because real responsibility is being like, Hey, these are the choices I made. I need help. You have to take these from me. I am really screwing this up, but I am going to live and die with what the choices I'm making. I'm, right. I'm not going to let myself get in that stage that's just emotionally driven because I'm, I'm naturally, I mean, we've talked, I'm a naturally emotional person, but emotionally driven uh, responsibility or accountability, 
I don't think has the lasting power. It's like the warm fuzzies when you have a nice testimony meeting or a spiritual experience or you're giving someone service. You feel the warm fuzzies, but they leave. They don't last. You have to shift into a spot where you're like, I'm going to own this. I, I want to own this. Uh, I, I think the one of the biggest problems with pornography, but maybe it's any sin, but in my case, pornography, masturbation, is that you don't feel comfortable with yourself. Like you said, yeah. I feel broken. I, I don't I, I don't want to spend time with myself. I don't want to be with myself because if anyone else knew, they wouldn't want to spend time with me either. Yeah. But all this all of a sudden, I I want to spend time with myself. Hey, hey, John, I see where you're at. I see where you want to be. They're not aligning. Let's let's sit down. I want to make the small changes over time that get us to there. And and that's really it's a tough thing to want to sit with yourself, take the emotion out. Can't be like, oh, you're the worst, or oh, I can't just get those, and just say like, what are we really doing? What are we really doing today? <laughs> yeah, and I think you're exactly right when you are capable of being with yourself, which, by the way, is not always a pleasant thing for for many people because they're not they're not even capable of doing it. They're not only are they not just comfortable doing it, but very few people are really good at just being alone with themselves. And the idea that I'm, I'm working on that relationship with me, you know, who do I want to be? How can I learn to be alone with myself? How can I learn to be the person that I'm proud of being Mm. right? That's so, there's so much value in that. So much change. I think that happens once you start down that path. Um, I love that. I love that you, you know, you've experienced that in this process because it makes such a huge difference. I think for everybody who goes through that process makes a huge difference to get them to where they really, really want to be, which is living according to the values that they have. Right. I, um, I, I sometimes talk about pornography viewers like vegetarians who sneak bacon (laughs) it's like no no no. the person i really am on the outside is a vegetarian but if you looked in my freezer right now it's full of bacon right that that's so incongruous that if our vegetarian friends knew uh, that about us they'd be like what what's wrong with you why do you have all this meat in your fridge right uh (laughs) And that's really a lot of what's happening for, especially members of the church when it comes to pornography is they're like, I want to live this life of holiness and uh, discipleship. And I have this thing that I keep in the freezer that nobody knows about, but every once in a while I'll pull me out a package and fry it up. And then we like, we feel like we're horrible humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me ask you, how have, um, how have things changed in your relationship with your spouse based on the, even, you know, from that. So I think, you know, you had that year of sobriety and then you started back into pornography for a little while. And then it's been quite a bit of time now. How have things changed between you and your spouse overall in the last couple of years? Yeah. I, one major part is it's trust. Now I don't, you know, we say a lot of platitudes, it's, Everyone does, but especially the church. And we're like, yeah. and in Christian groups, like, well, if trust is earned. And I, and I agree with that. And it's, trust is easy to lose. But it, it, trust didn't come about because we were focused on trust. It came about because behavior and even, the, you know, the, the sequence of which choices were made, priorities changed. And then it, it was a natural uh, growth and improvement. So, so I, I, I do want to say trust, but I don't want it to be like, well, you got to trust me or I got to trust, you know, how do I trust you? That, like that all had to go away first in order to ever build any kind of trust. And, and, and what I mean in that way is that, you know, I think my wife saw that I was aligning better with being who I, you know, profess to be, my, it was aligning with my values and she knew that I was working on it independent of her. So the, the external account, it wasn't coming to her and be like, oh, I'm having a hard day or you got to help me out or, 
or whatever. It was. I like, don't think anyone I, should ever use that phrase. You got to help. No, me. no, but you know, I, you know, you you got to put, you got to monitor the internet, or you got to yeah. take the passwords, whatever. That, yeah, maybe yeah. I should clarify. Yeah. Or yeah, like it now was like I was independently working on it. She saw me doing that, and so now it's just at a point like. Yeah, I, like I mean, we all we all worked from home for a long time. It was never like, oh, you know, what are you doing in your room? Where where, where you've been at work? Like it's it's uh, and and also I wanted to now because there's not the shame and guilt if I am feeling um what, what did you say earlier urged not urges or but like temptation. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like yeah, I'm just I'm just feeling off today. I'm just kind of feeling those old feelings. Oh, tell me about what they are. Tell me about how you're feeling about them. Oh, I'm feeling this way and like. It's not this like emotionally charged conversation. Wow. How, yeah. how has her reaction changed to you? Um, because I, you know, I think most wives, when we start on this path, uh, or many, many wives, they are like, are you looking at porn? Are you looking at porn? Um, yeah. And I don't know if your wife has stopped asking, stopped asking you that question or if she ever did ask you that question. But how has, how has the way that she has reacted to you when you come to her different? Um, I think the number one change is that she knows, like there used to be a phrase. So my wife's amazing. I mean, I've talked to you about it. She's yeah. way better than me at everything. And so she already has that really well-built personal accountability. She developed that through youth and, you know, I'm figuring out later in life. Yeah, I'm catching up. <laughs> and so I think she, the biggest change in she never was really like, you know, are you looking for looking for Cause she's like, it was, it's up to you. It's up to you. But oh, when wow. she would, when she would say that in the past, like, because you know, she, I think it was protective nature. It was truth. And it was protective. Like it's, it's up to you. If you're going to do that, like I'm going to get to actually, she said once I'm going to get the celestial kingdom with or without you. And when I, when she said that, I was mad. I was like, no, it says we go as a family, you know, you like, I was, I was hurt. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I'm a major component of this family. And, and then, you know, as I've grown and, and thought about it, I was like, she's a hundred percent right. Like she's going to get herself to the celestial kingdom and I've got to do the same. I mean, we're in a marriage to make it easier and happier together, but individually we've got to get to the celestial kingdom. Okay. And so the, the biggest change in reaction was though that phrase, like it's up to you to decide what you're going to do. Doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It's like, it is up to me. It's actually an encouraging thought. Like you're right. It is up to me. And so when I come to her and it's just like, you know, I'm feeling off or or, you know, hey, I'm, I'm seeing old patterns, whatever, you know, phrase it. It's a lot easier to say, and and this is what's happening. Not the, I used to hang a carrot out. Like, I had a hard day, you know. Don't ask me too much, but I just want to, I just want you to know that I'm trying to be good. Now it's like, yeah, this is what I'm feeling. Do you have time right now? I don't have time right now. Can we sit later? Oh, I have time right now. I would like to tell you this stuff. Like, I'd yeah. like to tell you what's going on, what I'm feeling. Because in the end, it's up to me. Yeah, so it sounds like you're able to actually discuss your your feelings in an yeah. open and honest way. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel a. I don't feel like I'm discussing them to be forgiven, which I think is a a pattern in the past. Like talking. Right, so you're today. not coming to her and saying, "Hey, honey, I'm going to tell you what's happened, so you can tell me I'm okay." Yeah, this is not confession. Like, right? This, this is, we're not doing that. Um, right. So that's the first thing. And then I'm able to talk about it. Just be like, these are the, not like these are the facts alone. I don't mean it like that, but I'm present in what I'm talking about. Not like, Oh, if I don't talk about this, then this, this, and this is going to happen. Or I haven't talked about it in a long time. So now I've got this bunch of this crap that I've got to deal with. Cause like, you know, it wasn't just today. It was the, it was the day before and a week before that. It's like I'm present. Like, hey, I recognize that today is not working out with what I want to be, and so I want to tell you because I want to. I want. I want to be better. Talking to you is making me better. And in some cases, there's been times when I have that hasn't been my wife. Like, I also want to say that sometimes I know, and it's not. I don't know, necessarily like it's not a pornography related, but I know that there's things that it's my business partner that I want to talk to, yeah. or it is my bishop, or it's my kids. Like, 
not every conversation where I'm falling short of the choice to make is my wife's conversation. And that's okay because I'm not confessing, right? It's who I know that I need to talk to. Well, it, you know, what's that scripture working it out, you know, with the Lord. And I think sometimes yeah. we work it out with people who aren't the Lord because the Lord's put them there for us to work it out with, but not because they're going to solve the problem. Right. Yeah. And, and that's so, so valuable, especially when it comes to your spouse. I think, well, let me ask you, did you ever at like some point in the past, had you ever felt like she owed you? Like there was like, I'm the man in the relationship and I do the, the man things. And then you, you're the wife in the relationship and you do the wife things and you owe me some of those wife things. Cause I owe you some of the man things. Yeah. It's like, I scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of, right. kind of deal. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's a really easy cycle to get stuck in. Uh, and, and has that changed? Has that changed dramatically for you? And how do you, like, how do you guys relate differently now? I, I think in some, in some areas, it, there's, I wouldn't change as a thing as sometimes we look at change as like a total opposite, a shift. There are some things in our marriage that are like, I'm taking care of stuff. You got to take care of some stuff. You know, we all have right. the laundry, the dishes, the kids, whatever it is. Sure. But in our intimate life, there's no longer this like, you know, I've been doing all this stuff. I, you, you owe me like, I, this is how our family works. It's, it's more like I, I want to, I've been focusing my time to try and develop, Hey, we have time together. Let's connect. Let's be together. And that is such a nicer feeling of like the anxiety and the kind of uh, obsession. It's still, it, you know, the obsession of like, well, this has got to happen or whatever, you know, like, right. and, and it's a continual development as well. So, yeah. Can, can I ask you about sex? Yeah, sure. Um, so duty sex. Was that a thing in the past for you? Do you know what I mean when I say duty sex? Yeah, you might need to find in Canada. We don't talk about sex. <laughs> 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 we're, very, we're very behind closed doors. <laughs> right. <laughs> so duty sex, right? Like that that sex where she's like, "Well, I'll just give it to you now, so that I can help you not need it later." Versus, oh, yeah. I oh, want yeah. to be intimate with you. Is that different? Has that changed? Because we've talked a little bit about like there were times when you wanted to have sex and she's like, I'm not into it, but I'll just give it to you. Yeah. I mean, I obviously I never wanted to feel like a dog who like begged for his dinner. Right. So I think it does. It has happened. It, it does happen. You know, it, it's a, I think it's obviously a common thing. If it's people call it already, we've labeled it duty sex. <laughs> right. um, you know, is there, is there all, is it like, oh, you're done pornography and now there's like, woo, sex drive. No, like that's not a reality. Right. But at the same time, there's much better intimacy. So yeah. like sex can still sometimes be like, hey, um, well, it's just better. I mean, it's, I don't, I, it's funny because I haven't talked to my wife about what I would talk about, it. but there's much healthier conversations, much healthier connection because the goal isn't always just like, we got to have sex. If we don't have sex, I'm like, Oof. and, and then, and then if I am feeling that way to be able to talk about that without yeah. like, oh my gosh, well now I don't want to, cause I'm a, like, it, it, it's been a natural healthier development um and it's not just like the longer i'm away for sex it's like the more refined i'm becoming as a person the more that i'm living present in my state the more my wife recognizes that i'm doing that and i'm hitting the goals that i've mentioned or i'm accomplishing the things that i want to there's a much more fulfilling way to have intimacy and then when sex does happen it's because like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to do that with you. Right. I, and I love that because I think that's so important. I think you, <laughs> you you named it, right? You're like, I don't want to be a dog who's like begging for scraps from the table. I want to be your partner. And mm. I think that's so, so important. And I think there's a lot of psychological struggle for a lot of men who are like, no, I feel like I want more sex, but I'm not getting more sex. 
And I don't know how to get something that I don't ask for. Yeah. And I think you named it, right? You're like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm creating myself. I'm creating this person that she wants to be with. So I don't have to ask. I just have to have conversations with her where she's like, I'm into this. You're into this. Let's do this. Right. Like it's, yeah, yeah it's a totally different equation than I think the one that we were taught. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, my wife said something really true one time and she said, even if you got all the sex you wanted, it wouldn't be enough. No. And that's yeah. the funny thing about sex. Like we, and I'm sure I've experienced and guys experience, like they go on a binge of pornography and then you're like, I feel bad, but like, then you can go on another one like the next day or like, you know, like yeah. it, you can, it's so it's the sex portion of that isn't ever, ever going to be fulfilled. Like just sex like it lasts and then it's done. And so that made me start to realize that I needed to see intimacy beyond just sex. I love it. Not, and, and not intimacy for, to the goal of sex, but like. I I'm, Intimacy I, for its own sake. Yeah. For its own sake, like being present for its own sake. Yeah. And it's okay to ask. I mean, I think we, we, you know, we had marriage counseling and they talked about, um, requests and honoring requests and talking about requests. That's a whole other thing we talk about. So, but uh, he said like requests are healthy. It's a person saying, this is what I'm feeling. Yeah. It's just being able to be open and in a proper position to listen to those requests and also open to be told no or yes, like it, it's okay. So I, I don't want to get away from like, well, now it's just pure spontaneous. Hey, whenever we get a moment together, but it's uh it, it is, much healthier and also much more satisfying. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Do you guys do you guys talk to your kids about pornography or sex or anything? Oh yeah, to the point that my kids are like, "Oh, dad," you know. I've been in youth program basically since I've been married, and now I'm in the bishopric, so I'm you know still in the youth program, and so I'm very you know aware of that and its role in life and. Yeah, I worry for my kids, but not to not for worry because like they're like, oh my gosh, they're gonna be copying me. But like, yeah. it's just so much exposure, right? How do you talk about this differently, knowing what you know now, than you would because you've been in the youth program for a long enough time that you've yeah. probably talked about pornography about once a year for a number of years. How do you talk about it differently now? Oh, there's one of the youth programs. I know, right? I know. Uh, <laughs> kids coming in and out. How do you talk about it differently now than you did in past years? I think the biggest change that I've seen through the youth program, but even in how I want to talk about my kids is that I don't laser focus on it as in like, this is the bad thing. This, you know, you know, the old chewed gum uh, analogy, like if you have sex before you're married, yeah, then you're a chewed piece of gum. Who wants a chewed piece of gum? I, I actually use one that's like a more not not use it. I just think when I think of that, I think the more like a twenty dollars is twenty dollars, whether I find it on the side of the road and dirty or I have it in my wallet out of the bank machine is twenty bucks. Right. And so I kind of try to with my kids, it's just like, you know, you're awesome. You sing songs. I'm a child of God. You know that the Savior, you know, died for you. Right, buddy? Bye. Love you. Yeah, you know that the Savior died for you. And so you're awesome. You are inherently awesome these things will stop that awesomeness from progressing it it's like doesn't allow you to move forward because you're in this in this life is to grow that is your sole purpose for being here and that is going to harm or or reduce the your capacity to grow and so it's more like that is a distraction that's like an issue that you need to be aware of if you have that issue, come talk to mom and dad because I've dealt with it. I mean, my kids know that I've dealt with pornography and masturbation. They, you know, you know I'm maybe not my five year old, but they, I'm, I'm quite open to chat with them about it, and not in super depth, but just because I recognize that this, this is something that's hard. It, it stopped me for a long time. Wow. Yeah, and and I think that openness changes the entire culture around this, um, and I, I love that you're willing to do that. What, how's your relationship with yourself different? I sure like myself a lot better. <laughs> yeah. And I'm grateful to like 
not always be feeling like, oh, I should be doing this. And not just the shoulds of pornography, but like, yeah. I should I should be reading. I should be exercising more. I should do this. Should Like, oh man, should life sucks. It's the worst. Like, I hate it. And I look back on living that way. I'm like, wh- who in their right mind thinks that they're going to be excited to wake up if before they even wake up, their mind's already saying, you should do this. You should do this. You should do this. Like, yeah. If I have crummy days now, I'm like, I had a crummy day. Because I chose to have a crummy day. And it was it was the best day crummy day I ever had, you know? Like like it's and that's okay. Like the shoulds out the window. Like I just I as soon as they come in, I try my best to say, why am I feeling this? Okay, that's what I've got. Is there you know, sometimes it's like a business thing, can I delegate this because I'm overwhelmed or something? Who do I need to talk to? And it's just kind of attacking that feeling because yeah, I hate I I look back and whenever those creep up, I'm like, oh. I got to get deal with that right now. Yeah. And I want to, I want to just clarify this is, there's a difference between what you're talking about and what I call toxic positivity, which is this, like, everything's great. No matter what's happening, like my, my legs are literally on fire, but I'm fine. Right. Like that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, I'm just not beating myself up for what isn't happening yet. Yeah. And and I'm just facing that like head on. Yeah, no, I, I, I made a quote once. I mean, I, I made it up because I gave a presentation. I was like, oh, I made this quote. But it says that all the water in the world will never fill a leaky bucket. And that is there's this concept of just pushing in positivity. Like if you have negativity, just dump in more positivity. Dude, be, live your best life, you know, all that stuff. But if you have a leaky bucket, it's going to empty. So it's just choosing to con- face hard times yeah i think that's i think you're exactly right i think um you know just facing it is so valuable and i love that i love that idea i got one last question for you sure Um, what what advice would you give somebody sitting in the seat that they're in right now they're listening to this podcast they maybe they're where you were a year ago uh or you know Maybe they're in the middle of that year where they're not looking at porn, but they, <laughs> they're they just fighting through. What's the advice that you would give them wherever they are? So I would say, I, okay, I, my, my biggest advice would probably be a question. What is the, f- the first step of repentance? Because it's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I would be deep in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Even if you are still doing pornography, even if you just went off a binge, I have felt moments in my life where I felt his arm around me. And I'm saying, and I'm really screwing up. Like, I am not where I want to be. And the answer isn't like, I'll take it. You know, the answer isn't like, oh, give me, and the guilt's gone. The answer is, I know, and it's still going to be hard, but I love you. And the fact that there's someone who loves us amongst all the issue, amongst all the shortcomings and the, the, the failures, that will inspire you more than any book you'll read or, or podcast. You know, that, I don't, I'm not trying to shoot this one down, but anything, any of that will will fall away in comparison the closer you get to your savior those things are all still important and they're all still really good but without that key piece of faith in the lord jesus christ and developing that relationship it's it just gets muddy and muddled and and i find that i can see when i'm pulling away it's like no longer am I pulling away and then like, oh, now I'm doing pornography. It's like, oh, my, I'm not I'm not as close as I want to be. And then I come back and then those things aren't an issue. Like that's not the focus anymore. It's I want to strengthen this relationship. I want to be closer with my Savior. So that for me is the biggest thing. I Every time I meet people, because, you know, I, I try to mentor people now, I like conversations with them. I don't want to talk to porno- about pornography. I want to talk about what they're trying to do and what they want to be. Because that's the same thing that a savior wants them to be. You know, you've, you've got a God as your biggest, best friend, you know, biggest fan on already what you want to accomplish. 
Yeah. So let's stop looking at what you're not accomplishing. We'll deal right. with it. We're still going to address it, but let's not make that the focus. Let's let's make the, the your biggest support team your focus. I love that. And I think that's one of those those really key components that often we forget, which is looking where you're going rather than looking behind you and and you know being the land of should, right? And I and I talk about if you've if you've ever been running and you spend any time looking over your shoulder, looking backwards, you don't run as well. You don't run fast or as fast. You're not as capable. Like I played football in high school. I was a running back. I I never spent time looking behind me. I was always looking ahead to the right and to the left, making sure I was focused on the target. I was never looking behind me. And that's what you're saying here, which is let's focus on where you want to be. Let's go there. Let's make that happen. And let's not spend any time looking at how terrible you might feel about what you did. That's paid for. Yeah. That's the relationship we have to recognize with our, with our savior is that he paid for it. Now, by no means am I saying, and I don't think you're saying this at all, eat, drink, and be merry and, you know, just do whatever, right? That's not what, that's not what anybody no. said. What we're saying is if we can focus on going forward and, and building ourselves into a better person, some of this stuff will fade into the background all by itself because we won't have time for it, but all of it was paid for regardless. And we might have to work on it a little bit. We might have to recognize and, you know, take some additional time out of our day to be like, okay, I actually need to, I need to address this thing more carefully, but it's not the focus of my life. I love that advice. Yeah. It's paid for behind you. It's paid for in front of you. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and and he's, and and like, that's the thing. It's still going to be hard, but I'm here. I'm going to be with you. And, and, and like you said, as you deepen the relationship, you're never going to think eat, treat, and be married because you're going to now, you know, your biggest fan is there. You love him. He loves you. You're like, man, I don't want to do that stuff. Right. Yeah. I could, I totally could, but I don't want it. Yes. And that is so much the truth. Like when I think of God, I think of him in his omniscient, omnipotent capacity. There's nothing he thinks, well, I can't do that. Or I shouldn't do that. Or I should do this. Like he doesn't think any of those things. He thinks I can, and I'm going to choose to, or I'm not going to choose not to. Like that's Mm -hmm. who I am. I just choose whatever it is that I want. And I think that's so powerful to think of. Awesome. Well, you, my friend, are awesome. Is there anything else you want to share with anybody before we cut out? Oh, just just be awesome, everybody. I mean, you are here having a growing experience. Like, life is great. Like, yeah. life, the external, external, that can be kind of crummy sometimes. But the internal you, you're pretty dang great. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for sharing your story with this audience, because I know that it will change someone's life. I I greatly appreciate you. I appreciate the time that I got to spend with you regularly. And I'm so grateful to see the change that has come for you. You're amazing. Thanks. My pleasure, Zach. All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to Thrive Beyond Pornography. If you're seeking guidance and support to overcome pornography for good and begin creating a thriving life beyond it, check out my free webinar, How to Overcome Pornography with Skills that Actually Work. You'll learn practical, proven skills guided by an expert coach who has personally overcome pornography. Whether you're getting started for just yourself or along with your spouse, Darcy and I can teach you the tools that will help you put your life on the right path for you. Be sure to check out the show notes for a direct link and If you could take a moment to leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts, it would mean the world to us. Your reviews play a significant role in helping others discover the show so they can join us on this transformative journey. Thank you for being part of the Thrive Beyond Pornography community. Until our next episode, stay strong, stay focused, and keep thriving.